Hello everyone and welcome to another PWN Design Studio tutorial. In this tutorial I will show you how to incorporate your projected texture maps from World Machine into Vue and blend them together with a fractal. Yes, a procedural fractal. So this is what I got so far. Um, right here in the foreground this is a procedural fractal. This is the landscape I imported from World Machine is all right here and this is another procedural fractal actually all of this is one procedural fractal minus the projected texture map from World Machine um, and it's the terrain landscape uh, or uh, terrain uh, whatever it's called I'll get back it I'll, I'll show you anyways uh, let me just prove to you that it is indeed the uh, projected texture map from World Machine so here it is BAM this is it. I'm just using different uh, materials is all, but it's the same, the same landscape. So this is it, and let me show you exactly how it's done. Let me go back in the world machine, and I'll show you what I had exported my landscape as. So here's my landscape, and I exported it as as a 16-bit TIFF file. And the reason why I chose a TIFF file is because Vue supports TIFF, TIFF files um, as projected texture maps in a procedural um, uh, fractal terrain. So I'm, maybe there are some other options in here that you can use, but I, I tend to stick with TIFF because I know it works. Like I said, some other of these might work inside of you. I just haven't bothered checking. Uh, but I know TIFF works, so I'm going to stick with it. And then I loaded up a procedural train to make sure it's the one with the F stands for fractal and not the standard, which is the one without the F, and not the infinite, which is the one with the F and the arrow. You just want the regular standard procedural terrain. And then you just open up your procedural train here. And I'll talk about the downside of doing this as well uh, while I'm at it. The downside to this is that if you want your projected texture map to look um, decent, you're going to have to increase the resolution of it to what you exported it out as in World Machine. And I exported mine out at 2048, so I had set it to 2048 here. And that's also going to affect the detail in the terrain fractal which is right here and little bits of it over here uh, and right in here so it's also going to affect that and you don't typically have to increase that except for previewing purposes inside of this uh, OpenGL render right here um, because you want to look at the detail but you then decrease it because procedural trains are infinite in detail you don't have to worry about increasing that so this is the downside is that you're also increasing that resolution with your fractal terrain. You can see it working right here as well. So <clears throat> with that said, I'll go back in here and show you. So this is it. This is a very simple setup. All you do is you uh, import your terrain fractal here. And I'm using terrain fractal 2 because I'm using the newest version of Vue. Uh, and I just have different settings here to get different looks. And then a projected texture map, which is right here. So if I were to load it up, this is where it would be. Uh, and then you just load up your file right here. And there it is right there. Actually, I'm using, oh, where is it? Oh, it doesn't really matter. You'll just load up your uh, output map into view. And then you, you typically this will be connected this altitude right here will be connected to the train fractal if you loaded it first or if you loaded the projected texture map first it'll be connected to that all you do is you just click on it and drag it out and drop it and then it won't be connected uh, and then nothing will be connected then you just uh, throw in a blender node and connect it to the blender node and then connect the blender node to your two um, nodes here and then you're done and what I had set this to is just a regular blender with a combination of blend and I changed it to show more from my projected texture map rather than my terrain fractal. And that's pretty much it. So hopefully I didn't change anything and then save it because if I did that would very much suck. And as you can see here again it has to build the world so you can see what it is and whatnot. So it takes a very long time especially if you have a high resolution like 4096 or anything higher 81 what is it, 8192 or whatever 
Um, it can take a very long time to do this, especially when you're making a lot of changes and going back and looking. So that's the downside to this. However, the positives of it are much better. So just close that, and here we go. Here are the uh, the final outcome of that, and I'll just load up my last color. What is it? Render. Display last render. And that is this. And you can see the small details over here, and then you can see how those small t details kind of taper off into the projected texture map, and you can see them coming back in right here. And you can see it working in the background right here and over here, and it just looks overall really good. Um, granted, with good materials, you can make a projected texture map without a blended fractal node um, look really good if you have good materials. Uh, the material I'm using is just a very basic one that ships with the view and it's the Sahara Stone and that's found under the material layers and it is located right here and I'm using the gray one and I just changed the scale to 5 and lowered the bump to 2 because it was ridiculously bumpy um, and that's it. And I threw in a land, uh, an atmosphere that I really like. Maybe increase this a little bit more there we go. And we you know you can add some clouds and everything else. And there you go. That's pretty much it. Um, but I don't think there's anything else that I would need to show you. But, but that's kind of a cool work workflow, I think. Interesting that you can get those little details in there still from a projected texture map. And I haven't seen anybody talk about it. I'm pretty sure people out there do it. They just haven't talked about it. But you know, now that I have talked about it, you guys know the workflow and you can you know test it out for yourself. So, thank you for watching, and comment, rate, subscribe, you don't have to, but I appreciate it when you do, because when you guys do, I can make more videos, I feel more inclined to make you guys videos, because it makes me feel appreciated, I know, it's a little bit self-indulgent, but whatever, I feel appreciated. Uh, one more thing, as well, I created a Patreon page, because uh, it's getting really hard to make these videos while maintaining a stable job, and I... And it takes a lot of money to keep buying software and purchasing plugins and talking about these softwares and these plugins and making tutorials on them. And I can't do that. I recently had a kid. So I created a Patreon page. And if you're not familiar with what Patreon is, it's a place where you can go find your favorite artists and whatnot. And you can actually contribute money to them. It's kind of like a donation. Um, you can contribute money to them per project or monthly. Um, and it helps them with creating more content for you that you like. Um, and I have set one up uh, for small donations per month. So I have it set up for $1, $5, and $10. And you can uh, go and you can contribute whichever amount you would like and it reoccurs every month. Um, and that just helps with subsidizing these tutorials. Um, some of the benefits of doing this is that I can then take off the ads. I don't have to worry about monetizing my videos for revenue um, because I'm not really making a lot from that anyways. Um, but it's not very much. If you can if you can manage to donate just even a dollar a month, that alone right there, I can disable the, the uh, ads on my videos and you guys can just go straight into the videos without worrying about ads. That'll also get rid of the ads um, on my website if you guys are able to donate five. But I have other perks as well and some of them include models and packages and landscapes and everything else uh, and even uh, exclusive videos exclusive tutorials one-on-ones um, everything like that and if you just you know go in there and read it I'll link it in the description and uh, that's pretty much it thank you again and have a nice day